all over again looks like snowed again it's like repeat Uh, it snowed about four, four or five inches yesterday. Less than they uh, anticipated, I guess. But I got my buddy coming from Slovenia. He's going to stay at my place for a while. He's coming over. I'm going to pick him up at the airport around midnight. So I'm keep my vehicle clear. Problems they don't plow the street here, so you don't want it snows heavily here, you can't even get into your house. It's just a nightmare. Seems like every five, six years we can just get a major blast of snow. We had one about two years ago, two, three years ago. Maybe a little longer, maybe four years ago. And it just uh, snowed once and it stayed frozen for about six weeks. And the bad part was they didn't uh, clean the roads, the first snow, and it ended up being ice. Everything was ice for weeks and weeks. Couldn't even drive down side streets. It's just a nightmare. Usually it snows, the first snow just kind of uh, putters a bit and then that's it, right? But no, this one stayed, created havoc. So it's gonna put a snow on it. Yeah, it's sure pretty, but uh, sucks to drive in it. Yeah, so I did uh, tore a bunch of stuff apart yesterday. Uh, gonna make a video, put it together today. Just a bunch of stuff. I took some uh, electronics apart, looking for some gold and stuff like that, the usual. So, gonna make a little interesting video. I think I took a car stereo apart out of a minivan or something like that. It freezes here big time. Took some modems apart and different things. Seems like everything's built differently. Some things have really good stuff in it, some things have very little. I guess the technology is getting so good that precious metals, maybe another five, ten years, could be something else replacing it. New technology or something. They're advertising gold, this, gold, that, but you know what? There's less and less gold in these products now. I mean, copper is being used quite often, right? But copper is cheap compared to gold or platinum or whatever, right? So, yeah, yeah, Jackpot was mentioning, uh, yeah, and I guess what happens is the weight of the snow, if you get lots of snow and it turns to ice, it just breaks these blades right so I understand guys what you mean there yeah I seen some guys doing it here but you know they must be from back east or something they're used to that right we never do it here but you know we never get big snow like even this snow here it's turning really wet you can see it's just total wet and the temperature I think is hovering about maybe zero to minus one that's the problem. See, I shoveled all this yesterday. It's already lots. I'll do my truck here and then. So uh, stay tuned. You'll see that video shortly. Okay, stay tuned. I'm going to go get some lunch right now. So I shoveled all this. I'll run the cars. Cleaned all the cars off here. And I started shoveling there. So I'll shovel across here after lunch. Okay. Yeah, it's the back of my uh, storage here. We're looking at uh, quite a bit of snow on the road. It's 
kind of hard to tell where the ditches are, but uh, there, there's a few here and there. There's a fridge right there. Oh, it looks pretty snowed in here. Hope I can open my gate. Okay, here I could, couldn't even open my gate. It was so hard. Wow, there's a lot of snow here. No scrap in here, guys. Look at that. Crazy. Crazy snow here, I'll tell you. Look at this. Eight, nine inches of snow. Maybe more. Look at this. Stoves. Huh. Oh, that's gonna be a lot of water. I'm gonna go somewhere. Okay, here it's like a, a Bell HD TV cable box. Uh, it's got screws, lots of screws in the back. I took them out already. There's a one here, two more, another one, another one, another one, another one. Like eight screws or so. So also, um, this should be taken off too. This holds the board. Where the board goes, one nut here. What I like to do is I like to keep a, a magnet handy so you can just throw everything on a magnet. But uh, let's just uh, open her up and see what's in here. I think I got pretty well the screws that I think I got. So we'll just. Uh... Yeah, so basically, the screws are out. So you just to open the uh, lid, slide the lid back a bit. Okay, heavy uh, metal top, got quite the board in here, uh, one big green board, it's got a gold gold corner chip, it's got some uh, flat ICs, a couple of crystal oscillators, a transformer, a couple of the transformers with winding copper in there, a flat pack here. So it does have a lot of things. So it's got one, two, three, four, four transformers, then a couple of uh, torrid things with copper wrapped around, one power transistor. So uh, for gold content, um, I would say uh, you got a little bit of plating here, where the, you got a phone jacks and different type of jacks. You got plating here, plating there. And some plating over there. And then where the card, there's a little SIM card that fit in here. Right here where the card fits in here is a little bit of plating on that side over here. So uh, like I say, pretty interesting, interesting board. Start pulling some of the screws out. So if you're looking for, um, you know, some copper transformers or silver, there's um, MLCs and different things mixed in here. So, but uh, hopefully, I'm not sure. Like some of these chips will contain gold. Just not sure which ones. This being a gold corner chip, most likely there's some golding gold bonding wires in there that's where the power cord was sitting here hmm. pop that off Some awesome. okay pull this one out since the cord has been cut I cut it myself a little bit of copper wire there but these transformers you can pop these off right off the board like this they come off pretty easy and you can unravel the copper on them I would just go like this 
break one side of side of it. I basically just unwind it. I mean it's all about time. You have the time patience. But it's amazing, you know, there's just there's a lot of wines in here. So wind it around my finger and you'll see. This goes forever. So just a little part like this. You know, you got clean copper right there. I'm not sure if it'd be number one wouldn't be number one anyways. It doesn't have the the diameter for number one, so it'd still be number two, clean number two. Well, here, so you got that much copper, right? So, if, you know, if it's worth the time, right? I mean, if you have the time, like we say, if the weather's lousy and you know, you got nothing to do, uh, you could even smash this with a hammer and it'd probably be easier than what I'm doing, but. You know, you smash it, it should just come right off, I would think. It's amazing how much wire is on this little thing, you know. Then you have uh, one more like this. Now oh, it's just winding forever. Get it off here one second. Okay. There it is, clean wire. There you got. It. That's the wire that came out of there. Nice copper wire. Then you have trans couple transformers. You have one more of that I just took off. Two transformers here. But anyways, um, not bad board. Like I say, there's enough parts on here. You can take these off for copper. So then, see normally you gotta, you have to um, take the front plate off and all that to get to everything. But I'm just basically interested in these chips here, all those chips, but for now, I mainly take the boards and I stockpile the boards until I have enough or time to start popping things off but so anyways so you have um you have these crystal oscillators one two three three that I can see here okay so that's this one here a few things in there So this is a TV box, converter box, it's a bell system, okay. Uh, still playing around with this unit here, what I did is um, un unravel this, another coil, but this was a transformer I took out from here, and you can see it's got a plastics around it. So I'm going to just unravel it a bit for now, just for the hell of it, just to see what kind of copper comes out of this unit, see how much I can unravel. And I'll weigh it up and just to see, but looks like it's a bit of a pain to unravel it. It's got plastic between it. It's like a core of plastic. Can't find my knife. So. But I un unravel it all. And I was just. Kind of just for the for the fun of it, just see what kind of weight I get of this. So just uh, stand by and uh, keep unraveling this one. As you can see, it's got a thin layer of plastic on it, but each wire has a separate liner of plastic. So you have multiple liners of plastic in here. That's the problem. Makes it a bit of a pain. I probably went too deep on that one. Okay, stand by. Okay, there you got one ounce and one eighth. 
So if I go to now grams, 33 grams. So you just have basically just just a little bit over an ounce. So like I say, you know, um, the transformers, like I say, there's a lot of work to get get the windings out. It's just it's so small, the hairs are just so fine. Uh, the bigger stuff was pretty good. It was easier, right? The bigger stuff, but, but the winding spools are good. The wires at least thick enough and heavy. But the actual transformers, I think you're just better to leave them, uh, take them out maybe, and put them in your um, transformer bucket. It's definitely not worth stripping, that's for sure. My eyes, it wouldn't not worth stripping at all. Okay, so this is it on this. Uh, this one here, you know, there's still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven ICs that I would take off, then the gold plating. Okay, so this is it. Let's wrap up on this one. Um, I can say if it's worth the time, you know, it's still nice, nice copper, right? You'll need about 16 of these boxes to make a pound. So, you know, it shows you need a lot, and the pound is only, say, $3 a pound. Less than $3, actually. This is number two copper. Okay, that's it on this one. Okay, I got a PlayStation here. Not sure which one this one is. It's a SCPH7501. So anyways, uh, it's been in the rain and stuff. Couldn't sell it as is, but I'll take it apart. See what's in it. See what kind of um, gold bearing materials are inside these things. See what they use for a processor or IC chips. You know, I, I sold these in the past at flea market. I don't seem to pay very much. The demand is not that high. But um, it's still, still could sell it. But most kids that are buying these systems, they want the updated systems. They want the latest technology. I'm not sure which one this one is, but let's go here. Maybe one right here. Nope. Mm. Came up pretty easy. Yeah, you see that one? See, understand this is why this is loose. It could be built better than that. Just sitting there. Just sitting on here like this. I guess it's pressured in there. So just a big piece of plastic here with some screws. Hmm. I don't see very much here. I see some more transformers here, like the other one, the coiled on one. And a bunch of, um... Hmm. So you can actually take this out completely. This whole thing is one unit with one mortar, two mortars here. And then we have the um, laser head, laser eye there. Let's see. Hmm. It's pretty basic. At least it's pretty easy to open. Uh, I know the um, Xboxes are pretty complicated. I opened a couple of those. This one is relatively easy. Not a lot to it. See, it's all got water damage, it's all rusty. So, how can you try to sell that to someone, right? Obviously, it's not working properly. See all that rust? And sitting in the rain. 
been sitting in my yard probably for at least a couple of months. I don't see any gold plating there, nothing. Just a steel, steel cover. Okay. I'll take this plate off. Hmm. Let me take some of the screws out. I'm seeing a lot of uh, memory type of stuff for nothing here, really. It's pretty basic. Might be a little more uh, sophisticated. So, one little board. That's a power board, so that's nothing to do with. There is IC chips in here. I'm gonna break some of the traces off. Traces off. There it is. Nice big uh, IC chips here. Very nice. Wow. He's got to have gold in these ones for sure. So you got four big flop packs in here, and then you have a smaller one, a couple IC chips. It's definitely like a high grade board. Uh, there's some gold plating here. Gold plating here, not a lot. Hmm. Not really a lot, it's a little bit. But these chips here, for sure, it's Hong Kong Sony Computer Entertainment, and they all have uh, chip numbers and part numbers. You can see where I tore the where I tore the board apart a bit here when I pulled on that shielding. This all this green is copper, so. That's what they do when they granulate the board. First, they put this uh, the board in like a tumbler thing, and they heat it. It tumbles and tumbles, and all the components, everything falls off. Then they come with a, a straight board like this, and they granulate it, grind it all up, and the copper comes out of here. You're not get a lot of copper, but if you have hundreds and hundreds of pounds of boards, you're getting copper. You get little specks of copper, and then you basically put it on a table like almost your panning for like mining for gold a shaker table and it shakes and the copper goes down one area plastic is light disappears down the table that way so you'll have one heavy solutions but some guys also grind up all the boards up actually and you can grind it up but most guys they'll tumble it off or if you grind everything you'll get the coppers here and then copper and gold precious metals and then you'll get your steel and other stuff and plastic down down the line. But best scenario is just depopulate the whole board, granulate the board, take the copper on the board. It's probably not a lot there, but like I say, over time, and if you have a high percentage of the stuff, you know, you're going to get uh, some weight. But it's all about volumes. Chips are nice. Very nice chips. Really nice three beautiful chips and then you have one, two, two standard ICs and one not like a flop pack, similar style, another IC so, but a very nice board. So that's pretty well it, not a lot on here besides the power board. 
I'll pull the power board off. Not knowing how much gold comes out of this is probably, you know, if you have a good working one, you probably get more money selling it than actual gold value, but, you know, sometimes a power board goes, you could change the power board quite easy, actually, or the laser, laser itself could be changed. The rest is just a shield here, a shielding. Pretty simple. Okay. Not bad. You, like I say, you got a couple mortars here, a little bit of wire. That's it, but very nice board. That's the PlayStation. Yeah, now I have a, looks like a, a Telus receiver. It's made by Cisco. It also says Link HD and Record. I'm just wondering if it records. So far, I see a little bit of gold plating here on the USB. Um, I have two screws in the bottom here. Two. And there was uh, four screws on your RC outputs. Um, there's a little bit of plating on here, but not that not that good quality. You can see it's poor quality. Okay, let me see how it comes apart. Took the screw here. Could be something hidden. Something hidden here. The, I can't find so let's see here it is can't tell where the hidden screws are I just wonder sometimes your feet have hidden screws no nope. here hmm I took two screws out. Oh, here it is. Right there. Yeah. So two of the back legs got. And it's got torque screws. See, I'm looking for gold recovery IC chips. I'm looking for gold plating. Anything for the gold dream. So, hopefully uh, something's good in here. Usually these cable boxes are pretty good. But you just never know. Uh, they're going into fiber optics. Fiber optics and technology is getting so advanced. Not using much, much uh, plating, not much anymore. Or it's mostly like flashed on. Okay, so some kind of removable card here with some gold plating. I forget how this comes out. I see screws here too. Hmm. Yeah, this looks like it's removable here. Get my screwdriver out. Pop the slot card out. This could be your um memory card or something. Got gold plating here. Pull these off here. I can see right away gold plated fingers here. Didn't look too bad. And I see some gold plating on a couple of things here. So I'm not really sure this could be a, some sort of memory. Something, I'm not sure. So he heat sink right here. Oof. There's actually like rivets in there. And I'm not even sure if that, that chip will even give you any gold at all. And there's some chips like this that uh, they don't have anything in there. I just don't personally know. I like to the reverse side of this board. Take these screws out here. This is 
awkward to get my screws in here. So let me unscrew this here and get the board out. Try to save a little time. Step by. So I basically, I pulled this thing like this way and I took the four screws out first. So basically it's got a little bit of gold plating here, but it looks really, really minor plating. But in any event, there's a little bit of plating there. A little bit of gold on the, uh, on that port. So basically you got a bunch of plastic again. So on that side it's got a couple IC chips. Some kind of IC chip here and something here. So and this one plugged in here. So I'm not seeing a lot of stuff in this board to be honest. I don't think this chip is that, that good. If anybody knows about this type of chip, let me know. The Cisco built unit crystal oscillator here, and there's a lot of um, very tiny look. Here's some um, MLCs. Some smaller ones here. But I'm not seeing very much on this board, to be honest. Hmm. How hard is to get this chip out? Look at BGA, but it's just uh, it's actually like a. Let's go. Basically a BGA, but uh, it's gonna be in the uh, Bonnie wires. It's a problem, probably not. It's like a CPU, like a green fiber CPU, basically like a CPU you see on the computer nowadays, without a heatsink. Now it's a heatsink here that went over it. So if anybody knows, will this contain gold? Any precious metals? Not really sure. Okay, that's that one there. Let's go to look at something else. Okay, looks like a cordless phone of some sort. First one I've seen the style here, but this is Clarity Professional something C4220 plus. Kind of a different shape. But anyways, um, it also had um, these batteries here. Hi-Fi i-fi or something first time i've seen usually they're battery packs these are single batteries triple a's let me um get in here and uh take a few screws out see what kind of a gold plating board they have and so on in here for gold recovery it's an oddball phone that's why i brought it in i, I took a lot of cordless phones apart but this one being an oddball Maybe it's going to have something decent inside it, hard to say. If not, I see a little bit of gold plating where the battery contacts are. Okay. Okay, got some screws here. Sometimes by the numbers, numbers they have a lot of plating. This one, they're hit and miss, right? Some are better than others. This one, like I say, I don't know. Just gonna check it out anyways. These are things I find in, you know, in house demos or, or us and just thrown out in the garbage, so. Okay. So we got a speaker here, two speakers, more plastic pad here. So 
basically I don't see any gold plating on this pad but sometimes like this sometimes they have a film on here this one doesn't this is you usually have a sticker on here this one is actually doesn't have it see it's painted on hmm. so I don't see very much on this one here but there is something here under the shielding here it's got to have an icy chip here I'm seeing a bunch of uh, gold plated pins here around this outer board to protect this IC chip. So that's your main chip is right here. So I see one crystal oscillator, a little bit of gold plating around this uh, outer edge of the board. So not a lot here. And here's your display. Display is pretty pretty simple. Pretty simple, basic display. This might pop this off, maybe. Get soldered in there pretty good. So yeah, I'm not seeing very much here. A little disappointing actually, but they got one. It's a DSP chip. So I imagine there'll be some bonding wires in that chip itself. Main brain there. It's a little bit of co contacts, or actually these are MLCCs maybe or something on here. It's so small. Hmm. So not a lot in this one, I can say pretty basic, but only good thing is that IC chip, even the plating here, you'd have to chisel it off here, and it might not even be worth to get that little bit of plating out, but anyways, it's there, and it, one crystal oscillator, and it's got a bit of a gold on it. Does it or not? Yeah, I just the uh, inside edge is a bit of gold on it, for some reason, but on the inside. Pop that off. Maybe it's just glue. It's probably glue. Okay, not really that great. A little bit of plating here is pretty nice actually. Off these terminals where the battery connection is, those are probably worth taking for plating for sure. And then result is maybe a little bit here. Okay, some sort of um, a data thing, a modem of sort of some sort. So I call the D-Link. So that's some plating here on the terminals here. Got eight eight terminal foam plug terminal type things. It's got a couple screws here. Two screws I can see here bottom pull them out quickly I have an open one for a while like some some could be good but I say it's hard to say I'll have to look out what's in here okay more plastic Okay, it's a D-Link. It's got one main IC chip, probably really good. Group Tech 138S. Not sure what these are here. It's got four of those things, whatever they are. Nice uh, IC chip. A little bit of copper spool or a torrid winding. The IC chip, the one crystal oscillator. Let me see what's on the opposite side. And these things, like I say, they're just basically all plastic. So you're dealing with lots of plastic. The other side, really nothing. There's some uh, diodes here. And um, people do say there is gold in diodes, but how much gold would be in there, I'm not sure. 
Can we reuse them on something else? So you got you got plating on eight ports. You got this probably gold bearing chip. You got one IC chip, or one sorry one crystal oscillator. I'm not sure what these group techs are. If anybody knows what they might be, it's a HST uh, 2027DR group tech 14 1214Ms. Almost like their IC chips, which it could be too. Some special IC chips. So there could be gold bearing in those possibly too. But the flat pack itself is probably what you want on this one. But it says is it a symbol here, do not touch. I don't know if that's um static electricity sensitive or it's just chemical use chemicals in here but more probably most likely static electricity but anyways like I say I usually wear my black latex I usually want to take these things apart just because they're dusty and dirty and grimy and there could be chemicals on these also okay this one's a wrap on that one well, here where it shows uh, the hand do not touch I'm thinking that's a static electricity symbol don't touch it uh, because it's, it's sensitive to, you know, static. But the ROHS is uh, is a compliance where, um, uh, what is it? Let me just, restriction of hazardous substances. So, so there's six hazardous materials that go into electronics. Uh, the European Union in 2002, they banned those substances. So to be on, on their good list, or OHS compliance so that means the product is, is compliance to the, their uh, regulations so they banned six substances probably I would think lead mercury and, and other things um, could be a lot more of things than that but there were six main things they banned in electronics so I'm thinking this is probably relatively safe safer than some some items but I'm just thinking a triangle here with the hand line going through and, and I see lines like this so it's probably static sense I don't think if anybody knows you can see that there that symbol let me know that yeah. type of modem we'll just check it out to see what's inside it action tech model T2200M so basically uh, power dsl ds bond internet it's a dsl box it's probably way out of use now they they're totally different the boxes are more high high end i pulled two screws out of the side here so let me see how it opens up let's see what's in this one looks like just more screws somewhere Unless the front pops off. Yeah, the front, front comes off first. Should pop out now, I think. Oh, there was, a, there was a, a casing there, and then also now there's two more screws here under that little face cover. I was wondering why it seems so tight there. Okay. Plastic is ABS, GBM2 ABS. So 19. It's a bunch of little hard to read numbers here, but they like, could be like day codes, ABS plastic numbers. I think it's number two ABS. Like there's different numbers of ABS. Some can be recycled, and some are they, people don't want them. Probably because it's um, full of uh, chemicals and fire retardants and all that. Okay, so we got similar looking board. Uh, it doesn't have any uh, ROHS, 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 
but it's got tantalum here. One, two, three, four tantalums here. So, show you over here. Tantalum right there. Another one. Another one four. It's got the similar uh, box. Similar as the other one here. Must be IC chips, I would think. This has four jacks. What looks like a bit, bit of plating. Four, six. But it looks like silver plating, actually. They don't look like gold, they look like silver. Yeah, they're not gold, they're silver plated. Hmm, not different. It's got your LEDs here. So, but I'm thinking this under here is, is some, something. What can I see or something here? Yeah, it's got an IC or some sort. Figure how it comes out. Just try to cut it out. Okay. Well, yeah, it's got lots of goop. Get some more clinics here. Let's get that heat grease is on here. So okay, so I'll pull tantalums off right away. I have a little container of tantalums there. Got another IC chip here too. Like I said, I mean I'm not sure if I could, if the gold bearing or not. These ones don't know. But I'm just I'm starting to pull tantalums off. Got a few only here, but just gonna pop them. I'm here right now. I'm gonna pop them off. Just have to touch them with a screwdriver and they just come off really easy. Because tantalums are getting pretty rare. Oh, look at this grease on my hand. Toxic grease. Okay. Pull this one off here too. Not a lot, but just, okay, I have a lot of uh, electronics that have tantalums on, but I'm just right now leaving them on there. But this type of stuff here, I just look for gold bearing materials, and that's it. I figure a couple IC chips here, three IC chips. The fourth one, don't know. And there's a bunch of MLCs and all that kind of stuff. These might be like, a, like almost like a tantalum here too. Not sure. Probably more like resistors, I think. Okay, well, this one, like I say, it's not much in there. Back is clean. Okay, so in here, um, I wasn't sure what it was until I saw here. It says 320 gigabyte. So it's probably external hard drive, I'm thinking. Had four screws in the bottom. Two were hidden under the plastic sticker there. Oh, that's why... It, that's why. I was wondering why there was holes here. I couldn't figure why there was holes here. Someone drilled into the hard drive. Said taken apart. I drilled into the hard drive. Oh, God. Let's get up this one. holding it here. Well, I had the screws out. Hmm. Here it is. Must be a long screw because we're still holding. Okay. Huh. 
They never penetrated the hard drive. They thought they did. They tried to penetrate the hard drive. So they never did. It's been in the water, so it doesn't matter. I mean, but they, you can see they penetrated just the edge of the cover. See that? So obviously they didn't know what they're doing. I just want everybody so paranoid about hard drives now. So anyways, uh, I'm not going to deal with this right now. It's all wet and wet inside. and So definitely it's just a hard drive in here. Let's see if it's... I opened a million hard drives you've seen before, what they look like. But what was the... Does it say 320? Let's see. Yeah, 320 gigabyte. Desk Star Hitachi. Hmm. It's funny how there's two screws missing here, but the screws are there. Surprised they never took it apart. They just tried drilling into it, but. They must have had the wrong bit or something. Okay. What else do I have here? Anything else to can play with? Mm, it's pretty well out. I got a car store here. I might open a car store, so stand by. Okay, I got a car store here. It's a digital one with the CD player. It's actually a Chrysler. It's probably out of a minivan or something. Okay, it took a bunch of screws off. There was two here, two there, two there, and then uh, two on each side. Let's just see what this cover shows. Shows a board. They welded the board on, which I don't like. They welded it to the uh, things. Pop off the front plate. A couple little clips here, like this. So the whole front should come right out. Also, two clips on this side. Hate to be the repair guy on these radios. But how do you repair anything? Everything's just jammed right in there. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to cut this off here because I can't find the plug. That one there. Okay. So I'm going to cover here. And this, by the way, is really, they're pretty heavy, these radios. They're just solid. Okay, a couple more screws here. One here. Some have really good to find which one's what. Some have really good boards in them. Had a couple before that were really good. Every one's a little different, so you have to kind of open them up and look. Okay. It's all Torx, by the way. Torx screws. So we got it. It's uh, it's epoxied in here. You can see it's all been epoxied, probably to keep the, the moisture out of the kind of components. Nice copper torrid there. Gold plating here. I see some gold plating around where this junction was. But uh, let me just um, pull this side out. Get it out. More screws on this side. That should be the CD, CD section. So 
Well, there is icy chips in these things, right? Okay, so you know, here's your icy chips also for your uh, the CD CD board, which is we're taking out. It's like almost like a CD drive, right? Basically, it's a CD drive, so it's the same type of board. And it's got some uh, electric motors in there. Two screws, that's it. Hmm. It's clipped in here. Okay. So you can put that on your CD board drive. You want to sell it, sell it the way it is, or any gold plating here? No, nope. silver plating. So you have two two big main flat pack ICs and a couple smaller ICs. Three. So you can put it on your DVD drive board in your bucket if you want. You can sell them the way they are. I would take the chips off myself. Okay, so I'm interested in to get the heat sink out. Got a nice aluminum heat sink here. My main interest is getting the boards out for gold recovery. Let's see here, sitting right on the IC are on these uh, transistors. It's almost out. Basically, okay, got that out. It's pretty long. So, what else holding that? See too much there. Hmm. Oh, it's got rivets in here. You have to use a ch little chisel. You use your rivets in here. Yeah, you know, a good hammer. You can bang it with a hammer. I'm gonna break my screwdriver. But yeah, just chill each each side down a bit and you'll have a little piece of uh, aluminum. Pretty good size. So I'm basically interested in the IC chips only, really. Not interested in about and, and maybe a little bit of copper. So I'm gonna take a tough time to get this IC chip out like that. Pull the IC chip out itself. No point, uh, you know, carrying a board around, or I could just scrap it the way it is. I can pull this um, crystal oscillator off if I want. I don't think worth taking out, but some people do. Pull the other one off. Two crystal oscillators in here. Uh, there's some uh, another IC chip here. Pull that one off. And two IC chips. A bit of a gold plating here. I don't know how hard that will be to get off. Now the pliers. You can use like a, a you know, a set of pliers, and you can get in there and just pop it off. Makes it a little more complicated, but it's like pretty good plating actually, for what I could see here. So, anyways, I'll have to pop that off another time. Yeah, a little copper there, but. Yeah, we were taking this off here because the gold plating is pretty good on that. Okay, let's put that in here for now. Let me uh, stand by for a second. I'm going to pull this side out here. I'm going to take a few screws off first. Got by. The cover off of the CD section. It's got one, two, three mortars in here. And they seem to be kind of complicated to get to. A little bit, a little bit hard to get to. There's a screw here. Okay, that one came out. 
but uh, the other one's uh, I'm not sure what this holds this board in here. I see a bunch of springs here, but anyways, it's not really worth chasing a couple of cheap, cheap little mortars, but something real easy. It almost wants to pop out. There it is. All these little springs holding it together. There it is. A little too much work. Okay. Hmm. Just a lot, a lot of little screws here. I figure I'll just take it out. Just because I'm here. And like I say, uh, they do add up for weight. So that's uh, two mortars, and then there's another mortar here. Basically like a hard drive, same same amount of stuff. There. A little bit of wire. Let's take a look at this faceplate here before, before I run a film or memory or whatever or battery. Okay. There. Just a bunch of plastic. So you don't really have too much. Oh, you get a little bit of gold plating here. If you can see right here, a little bit of plating. They look like gold plating. And you have an IC chip under the LED readout. Looks like silver trace in here behind the glass here. But here's one more chip here. I'm going to pull that chip out. Newspaper in a recycling bin, so I can't. I like to have newspaper here. These paper towels don't that great. Okay. Another IC chip here. But like I say, there's a little bit of plating here. I'm not sure if there's much gold there or not, but there's a little bit of plating. Controls here. Okay, that's it. That's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like. All comments welcome. As always, thanks for watching.